This is marubo soup with kokoro. In this recipe, I'll share with you how to cook marubo soup, also known as black soup, and how to make kokoro, which some people call fufu because it is made from cassava. But that is not entirely true, and I'll explain further as this video continues. To make kokoro, the first thing to do is to boil water. So while I wait for the water to boil, this is what kokoro flour looks like. It is white, it is smooth, and it is ready to be cooked. Now that the water is boiling, I'll proceed to turn down the heat of the water first. And then the next thing I will do is to grab my omorogo, also known as turning stick. With the omorogo, I'll start mixing the kokoro flour into the hot water to get a thick consistency that I like. The picture you see over there is what kupuru looks like before it was processed to this white flour that you see. And as this video continues, I'll explain. But first, I'd like to say if you've watched this video to this point, hey foodies, don't forget to like this video, leave your comment, share this video and subscribe to this channel. Because on this Nigerian food channel, I post Nigerian dishes and how to prepare them. So if you are interested in Nigerian food cooking videos, I have so many Nigerian food recipes that you will like. While I continue to mix in more kukuru flour till I get the texture and consistency that I want, let me explain to you the step-by-step -step process of how those brown bowls are turned into this white kukuru flour which I'm cooking. After cassava has been properly processed into dough form, which can be cooked to make fufu. When making pupuru, the cassava dough is then molded into cassava balls and placed over fire to dry over a long time. The result of the fire drying process is why you see that the cassava balls are brown in color. So when the cassava balls are properly dried, kukuru producers would proceed to peel off the brown skin of the cassava balls and break the cassava balls into small pieces. The pieces of the cassava balls would then be grinded into flour form. But the process does not end there. The flour gotten from the broken cassava balls are then sieved multiple times to remove unwanted particles from the cassava flour. The smooth cassava flour is what is called kukuru flour. You see, by this step-by-step -step process of making kukuru, kukuru is very different from fufu because kukuru has a different, unique, smoky flavor and taste to it, which fufu does not have. After mixing in and mixing in, more kukuru flour to get the desired consistency that I want. It's time to clean up the omorogo and then I'll proceed to show you what this kukuru looks like in a bowl. If you've watched this video to this point, thank you very much. If you are a constant viewer of my videos, you're a constant subscriber or follower of this channel, I'd like to say thank you so much for your support and your effort I am privileged to have you in my corner. And if this is your first time on this channel, welcome. <laughs> I'm the online cook and I post amazing Nigerian cooking videos that you will like. Now it's time to serve the kukuru. I'll put my spoon into a water. I'll dip my spoon into a water, into a bowl of water. Excuse me. The bowl of water would help me scoop my kukuru easily. I'll explain and you'll see how it works. Take a look at how the kukuru falls off the spoon easily without getting attached to the spoon. This is what you want to do. And to even make it easier than this, add a pinch of oil into the water. Anyway, it's time to cook marubo soup. But first, let me show you the major ingredient for marubo soup, which is marubo leaf. This is marubo leaf. I'll proceed to pluck the required number or the required quantity of marubo leaves that I need. And then I'll blend with chili pepper, onions, and ginger. After blending, it's time to cook. I'll pour some 
oil into my pot and when the oil is hot enough i'll pour the blended marigold leaves into the hot oil for cooking marigold there are different recipes to cook marigold depending on the use and the person drinking or consuming the marigold soup to taste i'll add some salt i'll add some seasoning i'll add freshly cleaned or more as you know cooking condiment and i'm never ever going to forget my dried catfish because for this recipe i'll be cooking marubo soup with catfish this is not all but let me explain a little bit about the different marubo recipes that we have this is a basic marubo recipe because it is not for new mothers but if you're cooking marubo soup for a new mother the ingredients for marubo soup would be different and I would leave a link to that marubo soup recipe in the description box. I'll proceed to add crayfish because crayfish adds this lovely taste and flavor to marubo soup. I'll mix gently because I do not want my catfish to crumble in my soup. And then I'll cover and cook for about 20 minutes on high heat. If you've watched this video to this point, I'd like to say thank you very much for sticking with me to this point. I do appreciate your time and your support. If you're yet to like this video, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. This is what Marubo looks like after 20 minutes, and I'll cook it again for extra 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, this is what my Marubo soup looks like. Ah, it looks very watery, right? Don't worry. This is the perfect consistency. The reason is because I am cooking with dried fish and over time, the dried fishes would absorb the excess liquid and it would turn my marubo soup into a thick soup. Let me show you what marubo soup looks like. Take a look at this. So here's the thing. If you want your marubo soup to thicken well and you are cooking with dried fish, after cooking the marubo soup, Cover your pots and leave the soup to cool down for four to five hours. After about five hours, when you go back to check your marubo soup, you'll find out that your marubo soup has thickened. This is because the dried fish would absorb moisture or liquid from the soup, thereby making the soup thicker than what you let it, you know, be. Or what you allowed it to be earlier when you finished cooking. This is what my marubo soup looks like. Traditionally, the Ondo state people, especially the Kali and Ilaje people, they eat marubo soup with pupuro, which you see by the side. Remember, I showed you how to make pupuro earlier. You can, you know, go forward and watch that video. And I would also leave a link to another video on how to make pupuro. Now, let me taste my pupuro. Uh -uh. Let me enjoy my pupuro with my marubo soup. Let me bring it to you afresh. Take a look at it. Delicious, right? Oh yeah, it's time for me to taste. Let me taste it and see how well I have done. As always, I did very well.